Ah, a cube. A tall cube at that. Okay, I gotta stop here. I'm digging a couple things in this room besides the tank. Of course I'm gonna dig the tank. Digging the hardwood floors, digging the stone fireplace, digging how they extended the hearth in front of the built-ins. That's a nice touch. And this tank looks like it's in the perfect place, right next to the couch, near the fireplace, near the TV where you watch the game there. I like the placement. One of the things that first catches my eye about any tank, where is it sitting in the room? How does it present itself in the room? In this case, the tank is tucked away a little bit on the side, but you still notice it. A taller tank, so when you're sitting on the couch, you can look up and you can see it, you get a nice viewing pane. Like personally, I would like to have a little longer because I like longer tanks as opposed to taller tanks. And given where it is, I get it. If it was longer, it would get really close to the built-ins, get even closer to the couch. So I get it in this tank. For those of you that are wondering, it's 24 inches front to back, 24 inches across the front, and 30 inches tall. Which is nicely stocked. We've got LPS, we've got some softies, we've got some SPS up there as well. We've got an iconic collection of fish. We have the Oscillaris clownfish, we have a ras here where we have a puffer, we've got the coal tang flame angel, yellow tang, uh, and a, some blennies here. Oh, there goes coal tang bothering the blenny. Sometimes they can be real jerks, even though they're bristle tooth tanks. Okay, got to stop it right here for just a second. That's Sprung Stunner Chalice. That's the chalice that's right below the puffer and right in front of that yellow tang's nose. Those things are a great starter chalice. If you're thinking about starting in chalices, you can start with the Sprung Stunner or Hollywood Chalice. Here's the thing about it. It grows really fast and it throws out some big sweepers at night. That means that favia, that's, or that brain that's right next to it, is likely going to get stung and burned up. So in this case, since that chalice has probably been there a while, it's encrusting over the rocks, I would remove it and get myself a different chalice. One for the sting factor, two for the exponential growth factor, because uh, it can take over really quickly, and you're gonna be upset that you put it there, because once it's on the rock, like right now, you can easily pop it off. It gets encrusted much more over that rock, you're not gonna be able to pop it off, and it's gonna be a pain. So I would also, put in a red chalice. Clearly this tank is growing chalice as well. Put in something red, mix it up a little bit. We've got green hammers up here. We've got green zoas right here, green SVS, GSP on the overflow. You've even got some there on the rocks, a green bubble tip and enemy in the back. You've got some red Montes here. I'll get to that in a minute. Some green Colostera down there, some candy cane that I saw back there. I would get rid of that sprung stunner, get a red chalice in there, and really mix up your color as well as save that other color, corals around it because it's going to become a nuisance. Hey, Blenny, what's up? I'm digging the blue sponge that's there as well. That is likely a photosynthetic sponge. Hopefully he placed it there on purpose. For those of you that are wanting a sponge because I love them in a saltwater tank, they're always shedding their cells, which is just free coral food. He's got it down here on the Zoa rock as well. That's a nice little touch. Um, you can get those at Live Aquarius Diver's Den. A lot, of the a lot of the sponges are non-photosynthetic, or if they are photosynthetic, they're still going to need supplemental feeding. They usually don't do well in an aquarium. So that sponge, if you're liking it, you can pick it up at Live Aquarius Diverson. I actually have some over here in a tank that I'm growing that I'll put in my new tank when it's ready. I dig it. It makes it not only a nice coral food, add some biodiversity to your tank, but also add some cool look to your tank. We got it blue. It's, over, it's encrusting there. Looks like those zoas on that rock out front are growing on it. Nice touch there. If you didn't put it there, congrats on having it pop up in your tank because sometimes that happens too. I like it. Nice touch. I would do that if you don't have one. Grab some of that sponge that make sure it's photosynthetic and put it in there. Nice gorgonian there as well. You've got the jack-o'-lantern lepto back here, an iconic coral that looks really good. It's right there when you're sitting on the couch, you're going to see it. So when it's just the blues, boom, that thing's going to light up and glow at you. We've got some Montes in the back, a Monty in the front. I said I would come back to that. Here's my thought about that. Those Monty caps are going to take over. They're cool now, but they're likely going to become a pest. He's got a red one next to the green one, so he may be wanting those to fuse, which I admit it looks kind of cool. However, they're going to overgrow things and they're hard to get off in its entirety, and whatever you don't get off is going to grow back. So I would pull those out. 
I would put in a Satosa, if you like the Monty's, where I'd put in an Andata. Something that is not as quite as a pest, it's easier to frag, and in my opinion, looks better as well. But hey, if Monty caps are your thing, more power to you, the different strokes are different folks, have at it. We've got some peel colostera there, we've got some candy canes, bright green or toxic colostera down at the bottom for a nice mix of mixed corals in this mixed reef. Digging the fish too, some iconic reef fishes here, yellow tang, coal tang, flame angel, we've royal grama, clownfish, not designer clownfish, the perculas or ocellaris, just straight up clowns, uh, rock flower anemones down here. He's even got a chalk bath. That's cool too. Digging the rock flowers in the sand. What a great use of the sand bed is to put some rock flower anemones down there. I like that. They're doing well. I would get some other ones. There's some wild ones um, out there. Aqua SD just had some nutso uh, rock flower anemones. Always enjoy rock flowers. Easy to keep. They're not going to sting or eat your fish. There's a great anemone if you're looking for some diversity in your reef tank. Nice green scully here. Donut. Uh, facing at you. Nice. I like how you've anchored this down either with glue or epoxy because that thing wouldn't hold there otherwise, but it's clearly not going anywhere. <clears throat> that Monty to the right, or, uh, that left of it, it's going to take over in time. Oh, who did you have to knock out to put the skull in there? And you got some left to on that, so that's going to overgrow. And I've seen them, smaller versions, but I haven't seen that one that's kind of looking away uh, with its mouth open. Got some things for the long haul here on this tank uh, with that encrusting skull and other things around. Nice presentation tucked away here in the corner. All right, keep in mind, this guy's done a lot in a small space. He has 24 inches across the front, 24 inches front to back. That's the outside dimensions. This is a wood stand, which means he's gonna have less space underneath to get the filtration in. And he's done a lot with the little space that he has. We have a sump here that's taking up most of the space, ATO, dosing pumps, dosing containers, and a skimmer there, looks like a little Orphigium. We should get a better look at that in a minute. Current uh, efflux return pump. I saw the current efflux pumps controller there on the door when he <clears throat> walked in. We had great success in our budget reef tanks with the current loop system, different type of current system, but it worked really well and it grew corals really well as well. One app controls all that, which is nice as well. Get some Kmore dose pumps. Those have proven to be very reliable. I've used them on clients' tanks. Uh, seen them around, always a popular seller here at saltwaterquarium.com. Nice choice there, uh, since he doesn't have any other controllers uh, to control other type of dosing pumps. All right, dosing containers up front, calcium and alkalinity. All right, I gotta stop here, so I'll let this roll. <clears throat> let you guys have a better look at it. We have the ATO container right here and the dosing containers in front of it. Here's my thought about this. You're gonna refill that ATO a lot more than you are those dosing containers. And when you refill it, you have to reach back there to fill up the ATO. Now, I didn't see a line coming in from the ATO, like from a mixing station, where you can just open a ball valve and it fills up. So he likely has to do it manually. The amount of times you're gonna to top off or refill the ATO versus the amount of times that you're gonna to top off those dosing containers, way more on the ATO than the dosing container. So what I would do is, Pull those dosing containers out, move the ATO forward so it's easy to refill, put the dosing containers on the back, but I would elevate them a little bit. Bring them up so when you need to refill them, you can either reach back there and do it, or undo your plumbing fittings, pull them out, and reload them. Just, you're gonna need to reload that ATO way more than those dosers, so I would swap that up. Here's a nice little in-tank, in-sump refugium with a submersible light. Probably not doing a lot for its nutrient export, but it's doing something and it's growing some pods and probably getting pulled up into the tank. And it's fun to have a little refugium. Nothing like having a little underwater garden, so to speak, um, right there in the sump. So we have the skimmer with a filter sock in here, return pump, little refugium. It's got a lot going on in a small sump. It's getting the job done. The tank looks great. All right, taking a look at the return pump here. Pause it right there. Okay, so media in a bag, not gonna get much water coming through that media. It's gonna be easier for the water to roll around it than to go through the bag. Now he placed it in front of his return pump, which can help try to pull some water through it. And he's got a basket or a strainer on front of his return pump to keep the media or that bag from getting sucked in. I try to put strainers on top in front of pumps whenever I can, so good work on doing that. Smart to add a little bag of media right there in front of the return pump to try to help that uh, more water 
gets through it. Oh, oh, busted. You see that? Let me super slow motion replay. Er, er, er. Here we go. Here it is again. Watch those dosing lines. Boom. They pop off. Okay. Told on you a little bit. Uh, I would use something magnetic to secure those dosing lines. There are plenty of magnetic uh, dosing line holders. You can put the dosing line in there, clamp it down with a little uh, set screw, and then that whole thing magnetically couples to your sump. That way, it doesn't fall out like that. Now, some of you are gonna say, Mark, what does it matter? It just popped off the side. It did just pop off the side. However, if that thing can pop off the side, it could also pop up over the top. Now, we've done a little bit of securing there, but still, if it pops off, it happens to fall out when you're working on the tank, you're not paying attention. The fact that it even pop off to me is reason enough to magnetically couple those things, put it on an actual uh, dosing line holder, keep those things secure. All right, bag up. Loving the reef LED as well. Looks like he's got some kind of uh, cone type of addition on there to keep the light down. And he's got a lid on this tank to keep everything in it. Good job there, especially with that RAS that you had in there. Boom, here we go. Here we go, here's the money shot. Check out this room, everyone. If this doesn't make you jealous, you have issues. Check it out. You walk up the stairs, right to your right is a couch, nice little love seat here with the fish tank. Let's keep going to the room. Then you have a nice inviting fireplace. You got a game on the TV. Looks like you got a deck or entrance to the outside right there. This clearly isn't a man cave, but it's pretty freaking cool. I would hang out in this room a lot. I could read, I look at the tank, watch the game, enjoy the fire, like, what a nice little sitting, hangout, conversation with your friends. I mean, I would take a nap in this room too. Love it. Um, the tank just adds to this. Okay, so yeah, it's got all this like other nice stuff that people would like, which I get, like TV, fireplace, all that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, the tank just makes this room. It adds life to the room, motion, lots of color, nice things to look at. It's over there in the corner. It's not making a big statement, which is okay. Some people want the tank to make a big statement. Some people just want the tank over there in the corner. This tank is just in the corner, not saying anything, but you get drawn immediately to it. Love the placement, love the room. I would spend a lot of time here. Nice work on this. Love to see this thing when it gets grown out. Um, wow, I would spend a lot of time in that room.